following radio documentary is based on Irish footballers moving away from home in an attempt to secure a contract from a professional club. Every year, UK academies take on Irish youths, and all of these kids share the same dream, to make it in the beautiful game. Leaving your friends and family behind is a huge ordeal for youngsters, and with the success rate of making the football over in England so low, I was keen to find out how players get over the heartbreak and move on with their lives. Injuries and homesickness can destroy people's chances of making it in the beautiful game. I have spoken with three different players who moved to England as teens, whose journeys didn't end how they had planned. I also spoke with a parent who discusses how difficult it was when her son was missing home. My first interviewee was Garrett Christie. He left school at the age of 16 and moved over to Glasgow where he played for Celtic. With no leaving certificate from school, he was dependent on his football career to get him through life. I asked him why it didn't work out for him over in Scotland. So I was injured for the first six months and I went over. Kind of injury prone then for the three years that was there. Come home and I played for a there in the fourth division just for six months. And that was it. Then I still had the problem with my back like so. I just gave it a go for six months and that was it. So I stopped playing. I've done a few coaching badges. I haven't done the whole lot of them yet. I've done a few of them though. And I've planned to do the rest of them now over the next few years as well. I was obviously down like press pretty small but without being really known at the time. It's, it's hard obviously something you played probably all your life and, and, and planned to be a professional footballer. And it's kind of like one of your dreams and just ends like that. And I was quite down but there was probably enough support there and stuff to be kind of go on my life and realise it was more to, to like than just football. So I was always into the sports science and that over there in Celtic with sports science. I always stayed back at the train looking at them, how they test us and so on. So I always had an interest in, in the fitness side of things. So I actually went on to a personal training course then over, over here and became qualified then and that's what I've been doing that then for the last four years now. I, I even think when you're really there, I think certain clubs have psychologists and stuff like in their club, I think at the minute and then some don't. At the time when I was there, Martin O'Neill would have been in charge. He didn't like to talk of a psychologist had been in, but I think looking back now on it, then they could probably be used to just to kind of get you through to him where, where you are suffering and where you're injured or missing home or so on. That They probably didn't provide me enough, I'd say, at that, at that point, like me back then. We went to school like one day a week over there, but like it really wasn't enough. You could have missed days and they wouldn't have really been bothered. Like they didn't stop you from playing if you didn't go to college. They they do like set you up on course and so on. Like and, and they will pay for them but I don't think push it enough. Like obviously when you're going over sixteen, you're playing football, you're on a professional contract, the last thing you wanna do is be in school, so but they didn't really push it. If I could be give anyone advice if they be finished school over here and then we go because they you think you're missing out on two years over there, but you're not really missing out really on that much. And I think you could deal with things for a lot better with like being a bit older. When things are good over there, it's great, but when obviously when you have the injuries and stuff like that, you can kind of probably suffer a bit. Similarly to Garrett, John Dunleavy started in the UK and then moved back to play on in Ireland. He was 16 as well moving over and felt homesick at times, like Garrett. Luckily, his club over Hampton Wanderers had a very strong Irish contingent and this helped him greatly. My professional career, anyway, started at 16. I moved over on my 16th birthday and played for Wolves. So I was there for four years. I was kind of injured after my second year. I just kept picking up injuries all the time. I broke my foot. That was when I was 18, and that was kind of the first real serious injury I had. And never really got enough time to recover, I suppose, and to kind of prove myself at Wolves. And so I left there. And I went in a couple of trials in England after that, and one in Canada, and nothing really came of them, just for kind of different reasons. And then I came back in, I think it was January 2012, I came back and joined Cork City. I never really felt that I got a good run and a good chance to, to kind of show what I could do or to even to learn and improve. I, had I had a full run, say, of four years and the manager kind of turned around and said, look, I don't think, you know, you're not for me right now, then that would have been completely fine because I would have given it everything for four years and had a good run at it, but just never quite got the chance. Hopefully now, you know, if what goes around comes around, hopefully I'll have a good period injury-free coming soon. The, the Irish has definitely helped. Like, I only really got home sick once in my very first year when I was 16 and... I think something happened where it just kind of picked up, you know, like a little... I was just feeling a little bit down anyway, and then just it all of a sudden just hit me. Definitely see why a lot of people can struggle with it. You can't get through it at all. And I remember just I was actually walking through the club in tears, and the academy manager just, he said to me, look, I'm going to put you on a plane home tomorrow, and you can go home for a couple of days and come back, and hopefully you'll be all right. And he did the, you know, he looked at me brilliantly. He sent me home. I came back two days later, I think, and luckily, you know, I never, I never had homesickness since. I'd say the main thing that you learn anyway is, you know, regardless of where you do, playing first team football is it's a huge learning experience. Like compared to, even compared to playing reserve football or or underage football, like when you're in a first team and every game means something, and you know there's three points at stake every single week, every Friday night, and you've got to sort of keep on producing. Then that's when you start learning more about yourself and learning more as a player. And in terms of development, that's the biggest thing. So it definitely could be beneficial for younger lads to stay in Ireland and play some first team games before going over. I, you know, I would think now looking back.
John turned down the chance to sign with Manchester United and Celtic and opted to play for Wolverhampton Wanderers where he expected he might get more opportunities with an Irish manager and such a strong Irish contingent at the club. But if he was to go back and do it all again, he recommended playing in Ireland for a while before heading to the UK. But still only 22, who knows what may happen in the future with John. I spoke with Yvonne O'Neill about her son Daniel who went to play for Reading in the UK. She was nervous about him being homesick and lonely and reluctantly let him leave to play. It was probably one of the hardest decisions I had to make or we had to make as a family to allow him to leave school that early and to travel away on his own. It was very difficult watching him leave, knowing that he wouldn't have a family around him to look after him and that you were trusting strangers with probably your greatest pride and joy, your son and, you know, your fears of him being homesick and lonely. After only a few weeks in the UK, Yvonne's biggest fears came true. Daniel was homesick and he had to come home for a week. Yvonne explained how she had great faith in her son's success over in England, but still that niggling fear was at the back of her mind. He was homesick really badly when he went over initially and he had to come back for a week. It's very worrying about their education, the fear of if they didn't make it and they had neither soccer nor in education, where would they go from there? What would they do with their life? As much as they love soccer, how easy would it be to make a living? It was a huge decision to make, to allow him to leave school that young and really limit his options as an adult with his career choices. Although Daniel didn't make it in football, he's now 22 and is currently studying in college. I also spoke with John McGrath, who is 34 and has been playing in England since 1998. Starting out at Aston Villa, John's career got off to a great start, with appearances against Liverpool and Chelsea and even the UEFA Cup game against Benfica. This gave him encouragement that he would get plenty of opportunities to shine at Villa. But John's career took a dip and he found himself playing against much weaker sides. When John moved to Aston Villa he was 18 and was considered quite old. He was offered a pro contract and therefore received no education from the club. John says he is upset at how little opportunities are given to Irish and British lads nowadays. Football has changed and, you know, I, I look at the championship now and it's like an English Premier League, you know, it's, it's, it's full of good young English talent that 10 years ago would have been playing in the Premier League, whereas the Premier League now is filled with foreign stars and people coming from South America, Africa, and it... it is a manager going to give a young lad from Ireland a chance to debut or is he going to go and spend 10 million on a foreign proven player? Because it is, at the end of the day, a results-based industry and if you don't, if that young 18-year-old Irish lad's going to cost you your job, then you're going to give him a chance. It's difficult now to get in, but there is a lot of outside the Premier League and the Championship. You know, I've, you know, I've made a good career in League 2, you know, League 1, Compassable and, you know, earned you know, some good money from it and it is a great league. Now you have to be either an exceptional, exceptional footballer or, or, or an absolute athlete, you know, six foot tall athlete who can run all day, so there's not many Javis in any yeses coming through nowadays. It 
seems that opportunities to progress into a first team player in the UK are at an all time low. But evidence shows that academies are putting more emphasis on education, thus ensuring kids aren't left with zero qualifications should their careers fail. Homesickness is a huge problem, but clubs are beginning to use psychiatrists to help eradicate problems like this. For years, football was quite behind the times, and for Garrett Christie and Joe McGrath, education wasn't much of an option at their clubs. Now it seems the younger players are getting what is owed to them. Moving from home to try to make a career out of football will never be easy, but clubs are starting to create more links between education and football. Thank you for listening.